are you all doing today at home? I hope you're safe and well. My name's Ruth and this is my little friend Denny and we are going to read you some bedtime stories. This one is called Cats for Sale and it comes all the way from New York City. It's a tale of a peddler, some monkeys and their monkey business. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it's by a writer called Ezra Slobodinka. Once there was a peddler who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First, he had his own checked cap, then a bunch of grey caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the street, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, Caps! Caps for sale! 50 cents a cap! One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, Caps! Caps for sale! 50 cents a cap! But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. Oh, bye bye, Denny. He, he began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he and he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he, and he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, then the grey caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. They were all there so he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. But before standing up, he felt with his hands to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. He looked to the right of him, no caps. He looked to the left of him, no caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. Then he looked up into the tree. And what do you think he saw? Oh, I'm going to show you this picture if I can. Can you see that? On every branch sat a monkey on every monkey was a grey or a brown or a blue or a red cap. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, This made the peddler angry. So he shook both his hands at them and said, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, Now, he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, You monkeys, you! You better give me back my caps! But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, 
By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stamped both his feet and shouted, You monkeys, you! You must give me back my caps! But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground and began to walk away. But then each monkey pulled off his cap and all the grey caps and all the brown caps and all the blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the grey caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale! 50 cents a cap! And there he is, going back into town with all the caps on his head. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. I used to love reading that to my children when they were little. The next story is called The Most Beautiful Child and it's by William Pappas. They all lived together in a great glorious forest, all the birds of the air. There were small birds and tall birds and grumpy birds. Can you do a grumpy face? And happy birds. Can you do a happy face? And beautiful birds. And none of these was more beautiful than Mr. Peacock, or so they all said. His fantastic tail, glossy back and bright feathers made a sight magnificent to behold. Magnificent. There's the peacock, Mr. Peacock. And who was the ugliest bird? Mrs. Owl, no doubt, with her podgy fat fingers and big staring eyes. She was surely the ugliest of them all. So they all said. That's Mrs. Owl. One day, as Mrs. Owl was going to school to take her child her lunch, she passed by Mr. Peacock's house. Mr. Peacock said, Where are you going, Mrs. Owl? Oh! I'm off to school to take my child her lunch. Could you take my child his lunch too? said Mr. Peacock. Very well, said Mrs. Owl, but how will I know which is your child? Oh! <laughs> laughed Mr. Peacock. Just look for the most beautiful child there and give it to him. Right, said Mrs. Owl, and off she wandered to school, carrying the two parcels. She arrived just as the children had finished their lessons and were starting their playtime. Mrs. Owl found her child and gave her her lunch. Then Mrs. Owl began to look for the most beautiful child in the playground. She looked at each bird carefully. She compared one with another. She lined them all up and examined each one from every point of view. Eventually, after a long time, she returned home. On the way, she met Mr. Peacock again. Ah, I see you delivered his lunch to my beautiful child. Did you find him easily? I'm sure you did. Well, said Mrs. Owl, 
I arrived at the school and gave my child her lunch. And then I did as you told me. I started looking for the most beautiful child there. Oh, good, said Mr Peacock. So you did find my child. Well, said Mrs Owl, not exactly. I looked and looked and compared one child with the other to see which was the most beautiful. And really, Mr Peacock, I couldn't find any child there who was more beautiful than mine. Ah, oh, the end. Oh, I love that story. Well, I hope you're feeling nice and tired and sleepy now. So sleep well and sleep tight and stay home and stay safe. Bye-bye.